Good morning, everyone. I was gone last week. I couldn't find my pen. I got it now. We're good to go. I'd like to welcome everybody to worship here this morning at Mount Chestnut Presbyterian Church. We're glad that you came out to worship with us on this uh, rainy, dreary day, but God is good, and he is here, and he is present, and we are excited to be here and worship with all of you this morning. I do have a couple of announcements this morning. First of all, I want to remind everybody that next Sunday is our um, uh, chili cook-off, and Linda, did you want to add anything to that? Thank you. Bring a pot of chili, come and enjoy it. Everything else will be provided. Shortly following the service, there will be a very brief meeting uh, congregational meeting uh, to, to take care of some business next Sunday, and then following that will be the chili cook-off. So um, we invite you to come first for the meeting and then to the uh, chili cook-off that will follow. Are there any annou- other announcements? Oh, now that I think about it, I do have one myself. Um, how many of you remember the Christmas cantata from 2019? Um, which was God Talk with Allison and Amanda. Do you remember that? Yeah, did y'all like that? Have a good time? Uh, We're going to do an Easter episode of uh, Allison and Amanda, and I'm looking for one woman and two men to be readers. Um, It will, we're going to pre-record it, so you don't have to worry about being up here in front of people. Um, we are, uh, if, if you make a mistake, we can re-record. Um, if, if that helps uh, encourage you, normally, whenever I do something like this, like God puts faces in my mind of people who he wants me to choose. And uh, I've got no faces this time. I feel, I feel like he's saying to me, just open it up and see what you get. So, why? Oh, that, that's a possibility. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, something just, oh, the garbage can just, just fell out and hit me in the knee. Um, so if you're interested in doing that, please let me know. Um, and we'll, I, competition may be rough, but it'll be first come, first serve. Okay? So please pray about that and, and consider that. Uh, moving on to the joys and concerns. We have several birthdays today that, that we want to announce Um, Dick McCandless' birthday today and Scott Miser's birthday is today. And also we have a couple of friends from Prospect Presbyterian Church, Joyce Cramner and Bob Fisher. From Mount Nebo Presbyterian Church, Rebecca Fraser and Tim Bieber. I know a lot of you know these people. And also Alyssa DePippa, um, who has uh, gone on some mission trips with this church and and is a family member of some of uh, our members as well. And her last name is not DePippa anymore, but that's, that's what I know it is. What's that? Jensen. Jensen. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. Alyssa Jensen. So uh, happy birthday to all of those people as they celebrate this day. I hope wherever they are, they get a little bit of sunshine sometime today. Oh, thank you. I forgot about that. The, oh, it's right here, too. The Easter flowers. Uh, there will be a, bullet, a bulletin insert next Sunday. Uh, if you're interested in ordering flowers for Easter, so just be thinking about that ahead of time, um, and and the the insert will be in the bulletin next week. Any other announcements? Yes, Linda. If you're interested in donating to the Easter egg hunt, you'll be able to do so. Um, so there'll be baskets outside with, uh, for candy or uh, items or whatever. 
So thank you for that. Any other announcements or joys or concerns? Karen. That's wonderful. Karen saw two lovely robins this week. Leone. Uh, extra prayers for Kay and uh, Jeff Curtis um, during this during this time of their life. Kay is not not doing very well. Any others? Yes. Please keep Don Nagy in your prayers um, as he's having breathing issues and is in the hospital. Any others this morning? Okay, let's pray this morning. Father God, we come before you, Lord, and we know that the way before us is not always straight and easy and calm. Sometimes we have a lot of turbulence in our life, Lord, but we know that you walk with us hand in hand. We lift each other up, Lord, this morning to you. We ask for your forgiveness. We ask for your healing. We ask, Lord, for you to show us your hand in our lives. As we worship you this morning, open our hearts that we may be available to hear the things that you want us to hear and learn the things that you want us to learn so that we can go out in the world and honor you and glorify you. In your name we pray, amen. God of worship this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, chapter 25, verses 4 through 5. Make me known to your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all the day long. Please stand as we sing our opening song this morning. become his righteousness he humbled himself and carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah name above all so amazing, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, presence for
psalmist has said, my soul longs for the living God. May we focus on Christ as we pray our prayer of confession this morning. As I pray the prayer, please pray with me silently. Holy and gracious God, we are often filled with fear about tomorrow and fear about our problems that we have today. Increase our faith in this time of the Lenten season. Forgive our iniquity and cleanse our spirits, we pray. Amen. Please now take a moment of silent confession. Jesus Christ has said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. Friends, I declare to you today, because of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Friends, believe the good news of our Lord Christ Jesus. In Jesus Christ, we, we are, are forgiven. forgiven. Amen. You can be seated, but turn to two people beside you, at least two, and say good morning. Fist bumps are in order. As we prepare our hearts and minds for worship this morning, let us pray together the prayer of illumination. Shine within our hearts, loving God, the pure light of your divine knowledge, and open the eyes of our minds and hearts that we may understand and embrace the message of the scripture. Amen. The gospel lesson this morning is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 8, verses 31 through 38. He then began to teach them that the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the teachers of the law, and that he must be killed and after three days rise again. He spoke plainly about this, and Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But when Jesus turned and looked at his disciples, he rebuked Peter. Get behind me, Satan, he said. You do not have in mind the concerns of God, but merely human concerns. Then he called the crowd to him along with his disciples and said, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save their life will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me and for the gospel will save it. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world yet forfeit their soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words, in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Mike. We miss you when you're not here. Don't we? Let me see you permanent fixture around here. Wouldn't it be nice whenever uh, we, we don't have the dividing things? Wouldn't that be nice when that day comes? We can all kind of gather and sit where we want to sit and 
go back to our old places. I think some people forget where their old places are. It's funny. Yeah. Lenten season is a very important season of the year. For it, uh, it reminds us of the things that are most important and what being a Christian really is. It's about, um, it's about understanding what Christianity is. And, and it's funny because uh, in this passage, you know, Peter and Jesus have this discussion that goes on, and then Jesus opens it up to the rest of the group. But does anybody find it interesting what happened here? I mean, if you read Mark chapter 8, and if you have your Bibles with you, you might want to turn there and, and find that passage in Matthew. In Mark chapter 8. Go to Matthew 8 if you want to. It's not going to help you. But Mark 8. Um, if you go there, you, you see the wonderful things that Jesus was doing. And right before this happened uh, is the, uh, the situation in Caesarea Philippi. When Jesus asked his disciples, who do people say that I am? And Peter said, well, you're the Christ. You're the son of the living God. So times were high, times were good. Jesus was healing people. Jesus was, was well known and, and famous and multitudes of people were following him. And that's the kind of Jesus we like. Right? We like the kind of Jesus that says, hey, you know, everything's going to be great. Hunky-dory, you're going to have everything you need and everything is just going to be lovely for you. Sunshine and roses. And then, at the end of that passage, beginning of that passage that, that we have in our scripture today in Mark 8, you know, Jesus begins to tell them that, hey, you know, the Son of Man, I'm going to have to suffer, and I'm going to die, I'm going to be killed, and I'll rise again the third day. And, you know, he begins to say these things. And, and it's interesting because Peter just kind of goes up to him and, and pulls him aside from the group, and he says, Jesus knock off that kind of talk we don't like that talk around this church <laughs> we don't like that kind of talk around our people see because these are good days Jesus come on you know what are you talking about and you know I've been called a lot of things in my life I'm sure and um, some of them I know some of them I don't know I had a lot of nicknames when I was playing basketball in high school. And I'm not going to tell you what some of them are. They're not very nice. <laughs> but, um, you know, I've never been called Satan before. Um, you know, and, and Jesus looks at Peter and he says, get behind me, Satan, you know. Peter's like, come on, man. Chill out. Interesting passage. And that's, that's why I came up with the title of the sermon this morning. Uh, you know, the first time I, I went through this, I, I thought, you know, just when it was getting good, just when it was getting good, look at what Jesus got, goes and does. Interesting. Well, what we're really dealing with today is disappointment. That's what we're dealing with. You see, Peter, again, be began to get this idea in his mind. He began to get this understanding. I sound very ominous, don't I? Oh. Uh, he began to get this understanding that, hey, Jesus, this, this guy is really famous. This is really awesome. I mean, there's a lot of good things going on here. Jesus, your, your name is, is really everywhere, and everybody loves coming to see you. There's thousands of people that follow you at a time. And you feed them all when they're hungry. That's pretty great. And then Jesus says, no, that's not why I'm here. I'm here to be crucified. I'm, I'm here to be killed. And, and you guys are in trouble too. I mean, if you think it's just me. Hmm. Peter's like, man, we didn't sign up for this. Come on. I didn't, I didn't leave my vocation. I didn't leave my job. I didn't leave my business so that I could follow a guy who's going to be killed. No. But that's what he was saying. And Peter was disappointed. 
But Jesus had the remedy, and that's what we want to talk about today. First of all, two reasons why people are disappointed with life, and I, and I thought it would apply to, to what was happening here in this passage, you know. I think, uh, I think it applies really well. First of all, we get disappointed with people. We get disappointed with people, and that's what was happening to Peter. He was disappointed in Jesus. Come on. You see, they thought Jesus was going to do so well, and he was, he was gaining great fame, and everybody thought, hey, this, this guy's amazing, but that's not how it was. Jesus had to set them straight about who he was and what he was going to do. You see, we have expectations for people. We have expectations for people of what they, what they should do or what they could do or well, how they're going to help us or whatever it might be. And when, when people don't meet those expectations, we get a little, little disappointed in them. Well, reality check. No one could ever measure up to your expectations for them. Right? Isn't that true? It's really true. Nobody. Nobody could ever measure up to your expectations for them. So we become disappointed with people. Secondly, we get disappointed with circumstances. We begin to believe that God is not good because our situation is not changing. Whatever that situation may be. What I'm talking about is, and you know what I'm talking about, um, we have things in our life that we want to deal with, things in, in our life that we really need to, to kind of get straight, and we go to God with them, and we say, hey, God, you know, here's this awful situation in my life. You've got to fix this, and I'm going to pray, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say, oh, God, please. I ran into this. Uh, Connie knows it well, don't you? With hospice patients that lived... Good lives. Wonderful. I would even say godly people that I've met. And they were disappointed in the situation. They would say, you know, I, I was good. I was a good person. I never hurt anybody. How come I got cancer? Or, or why is my life being cut off short? I remember a man that uh, had ALS and his he was just turned 40. And, uh, and he, we would talk about this. And we would go on for hours and hours and hours about it. He would say, I, I always went to church. I gave to the church. Whatever the church needed, I was there and I gave it to them. Whatever anybody needed, in my family or anywhere else, I, I gave to them. Why would God do this to me? Where he was disappointed in the circumstances. Believing that, you know... That God is not good. And that, that's kind of a, a characteristic of, of grief, actually. I think about that. Because it was a year ago today that a friend of mine died suddenly from a heart attack, my age. And it was my son in law's dad. They were on a cruise in the Caribbean, or Caribbean, however you choose to say it. Wasn't feeling good after dinner. And he told Brenda, his wife, he said, you know, I'm going to go down and talk to the doctor. I'm not, I'm not great. So they walked down together uh, to the, the doctor on the ship outside of Puerto Rico. And he collapsed. And his life was over in a matter of 10 minutes. Boy, has Brenda had a hard time with that. Just getting to the point where they were going to retire. But he had lost his job. And the interesting thing was, <laughs> and it was a leap year, you may remember last year, his benefits, his insurance ended at the end of February. So he had one day and the Lord took him home while he still had insurance. 
How about that? Talk about disappointment with circumstances. It wasn't supposed to be this way. We get disappointed, don't we? Well, reality check. All your ideas about what your life should be can change in a matter of minutes, literally. That's what Jesus was talking about, really, with Peter, you know? I mean, things were so good, things were great, and, you know, it's, it's kind of depressing, I suppose, to even talk about this today. But Jesus wasn't trying to be depressing, he was just being real. He wasn't trying to depress the people to death, for crying out loud. He was just being real. If you want to follow me, it's going to cost you something. You've got to take up your cross and follow me. Hmm. So what's Jesus' solution? Here's what he said to Peter. He said, for you are setting your mind on the, not setting your mind on the things of God, but on the things of man. See, when we begin to forget what we think, what we believe is being important, I hope that you understand what I'm saying. When we begin to just kind of let go of what we think life should be, and we begin to think the way God thinks, then when those weird things happen, they hurt us terribly. But one day it'll make sense, and it may not make sense here on this earth, but it will in heaven. One day, say, I'm going to sit down with Dave, my son-in-law's dad, and I'm going to sit down with him, and I'm going to say, did you think when you were laying there that your life would be over? No, oh, I'm sure of that. But I'm sure that David is going to tell me. I'm sure he will. You know, since I'm here, somehow it makes sense. Because God's in control. What happens in your life and in my life may change dramatically overnight. But God is in control. So Jesus' solution is if, you, if we think on this level... We're going to be disappointed time after time after time after time. We are. But if we think, if we get, begin to think with the mind of Christ or with God's way of thinking, we may not be able to make sense of what's happening now, but it will as time goes by because we realize that God is in control. Now, some of you folks sitting in this room have had terrible things happen to them this last year. Doesn't make sense, does it? Put your mind on God. Again, what is Jesus' solution? Number one, lose our lives. You have to lose your life. You have to lose your life. Now, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. What do you mean, lose my life? That means uh, the control that you think you have in your life, you give over to God. That's exactly what that means. I don't know what's going to happen to me going home today. No idea. But that's okay. God's in control. Lose your life. Secondly, don't be ashamed to be his follower. Jesus said, you know, if you're going to be ashamed of me, I, I can't take you to my to my father and say that, that you knew me. You know, don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed to be a follower of God. Don't be ashamed to be one of his disciples. And thirdly, you know, keep, keep our minds and our thoughts on God. Keep our mind and our thoughts on God. Not on what is going around us every day. But let me tell you, the, the simple way to do this and, uh, and I do it, of course, every day, but sometimes I do it academically because it's part of my job. <laughs> Read the scripture every day. Just take a few minutes, you know. Just take a few minutes. Read the scripture. I promise you, it will begin to set your mind on things of God and your thoughts on things of God. What does God want me to do? You know? Set your, your mind and your thought on God. 
not what's, gonna, not what's going on around you. See, whenever we get, this is the thing, in, in the world today, it's so divided, it's ridiculous. It's because we're focused on this world. Get your mind off of what's happening on the news and get your heart and your mind on God. Okay? Shake your head if you hear what I'm saying. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. That's a way. It's the truth. Man, we get our... People are getting ulcers and, you know, their blood pressure's up. By the way, of course, I've gained a lot of weight back, but I lost all that weight for my son's uh, wedding. They took my blood pressure medicine away, so I don't have high blood pressure. How nice is that? Of course, the next time I go see the doctor and I've gained all this weight back, he's going to say, get back on the medication. <laughs> but you, you see, how, see how we get? We get all crazy. We get all crazy because we look around us at the situation around us. We may have lost our job. Things may be really, really bad. But if your mind is on the things that happened here, you're going to be disappointed. You're always going to be in a, in a flutter and everything is going to be a mess. And you walk around, you know, with the old Eeyore perspective. It'll never work, you know. And every, that's, just how, that's just how we are as people. But Jesus said, put your mind and your thoughts on God, not on what's happening around you. You're going to be disappointed. By now, I would have thought that we would have to have uh, not just two services, but four services, because we would be packed. The sanctuary would be packed with people. I would have thought by now that I could retire early because... Uh, the salary for the pastor had gone up so quickly that I've been able to put three million dollars in the bank. Let's see. This is what this. I'm, I'm just gonna, a little insight. Just a little insight. How much time we got? Okay, good. A little insight as to how pastors think. See, you get to a church and you're like, "Oh man, we're gonna set this place on fire." Yeah. Then you find out you're the only one doing it, or something, you know. And and pastors get really discouraged. My mind isn't on this. I mean, it is. But my mind is, God, what do you want me to do? You know? God, what do you, how do you want me to live? What do you want me to say? That's important. That's a big one to me. What do you want me to say in these sermons? I mean, I, I know that I look at this stuff months and months and months in advance. And, and I know that I have an idea what I'm going to preach in June. Okay, I, I know. I have an idea in my mind. But God says, hey, I, I, here's what I want you to say. That's the, the, see, that's very, very important to me. The things that aren't important to me are the things that most pastors go crazy about. And I, I'm already crazy, so there's nowhere to go, really. Um, but you see, if we set our minds on stuff here, we will be disappointed. My best friend is going in for knee surgery this week. He's disappointed. They say, man, you're in your 60s. Dude, come on. Right? It's life. God's in control. So don't be disappointed. Jesus, of course, didn't mess around with that. He, did, he, did, you know, he didn't candy coat it at all. There was no icing on what Jesus said to Peter. He turned around and said, hey, man, you're talking like Satan. Peter's like, come on. Chill out. But Jesus had to nip that thinking for Peter. Because Peter was high. See, he, was, he had his eyes on everything that was going around him, all these thousands of people following him and all the good times and, you know, the coffers, I'm sure, were really beginning to grow. People were giving to the cause of Jesus and making his needs met and everything. And Peter says, you know, stop that. Quit talking like that. You're going to discourage the boys. You're going to discourage all these men and women that follow you. You're going to discourage your disciples. We don't, we don't want that now. Jesus said, if you want to follow me, you have to take up your cross. 
Now, those people knew what a cross was. I mean, Jesus could have said a hundred other things. Oh, it's not going to be easy or whatever. But he didn't say that. He said, take up your cross. They had seen people carrying crosses before. They had seen people die on crosses. And Jesus is now telling his followers, you got you to gotta carry a cross, really? Because he did. Because he did. Well, keep your eyes on Jesus. I don't know if you can read that. Pretty small. But Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight. This, that's what the writer of Hebrews is talking about here. Laying aside every weight. And the sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to your friends around you. No, no, it doesn't say that, does it? Looking to your job situation. No, oh, wait a minute, it doesn't say that. Does it? Looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith. Isn't that cool? Isn't that great? Who, for the joy that was set before him, endured the cross. See, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, you, you would have thought that it would have said, and everything will be sunny for you. No. The writer of Hebrews said, Jesus, at the pinnacle of his ministry, when everything was really great, and the disciples finally figured out who he was, and all the people were following him, and he's doing miracle after miracle after miracle, he endured the cross. Wow. Despising the shame is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Yeah, some of this this past year, anybody burned out in here? Yep. Yeah. A couple of teachers back there saying, you have no idea. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Keep these looking there. Okay. Not. Because if you do, you're going to be disappointed. You're going to be disappointed. The end of May, I guess, will be four years that we've been here. And by now, if you're not disappointed, something is wrong with you. Because it's true. It's true, you know. You figured out all the all the dark spaces within my psyche. <laughs> all the things that I don't do right. There's plenty. So, but if you keep, see, if we keep our eyes here, we're, we're really we're going to be disappointed. Just look to Jesus. It's going to be great. Father, we love you today. You know that? We really love you. And we realize that happiness and fulfillment doesn't come from looking around us. We realize, Lord, that, that happiness and, and joy in our lives doesn't come from, uh, from the job we have or the situation we have or perfect people that we have in our life because there are none. There are no situations that are perfect. We know that. We get that. Heavenly Father, one thing is for certain. You, the creator of all things, have come and you live within us. You have quickened our hearts, as the scripture says. You have made us alive in Jesus Christ. Now, Lord, help us not to look around us, our circumstances and all that's happening in the world for, for our contentment. Because that's apt to change. Boy, is it apt to change. But Heavenly Father, help us to look to you. And in every situation, no matter what it might be, when we are confused, when something happens to us or someone disappoints us, may we go to you, Lord, and, and, and not uh, take that circumstance so personally like the world is trying to get us, to get us or 
people are out to get us. But Lord, help us to just see that life is, life is like that, you know. Help us to see that nobody is perfect. Help us to see, Lord, that no situation in this world is exactly ideal for the way we want it to be. I think, I think that would be a bad thing, you know. I think it would be for me. If, uh, if everything turned out the way I thought it should be, it'd be a mess. It'd be a mess. So help us, Lord, to keep our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. And not on the things around us. We get discouraged. Boy, do we get discouraged. We see this world just all over the place. Everything's upside down or something. I don't know. Lord, we're not, we're just here for a little while. This world doesn't matter. My citizenship is in heaven. So help us, Lord, to remember that. We pause to pray this morning, Father, for some people who are very important to us. We pray for Don today. Uh, pray, Lord, that they'll find out just what's going on. Uh, give Don the strength and, and courage that he needs. Help him there in the hospital all by himself. It's not fair that it has to be that way, but that's the way it is. And I pray, Father, that you would be with Don and help him today. Be with Kay and Jeff. Those people have, uh, have meant the world to some of the folks in this church. And to, to see, Lord, that, uh, that her situation continues to decline. and It's hard to her, for her to get around the house. It's hard for her to, to do much of anything without falling. And Jeff, Lord, is, uh, I'm sure, at wit's end at times. Jesus, be his strength. Be her strength today. Father, for all of our prayers and supplications that we bring before you, together now as a congregation, as the men and women of God, we pray the prayer that your son Jesus has taught us to pray. Praying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Please stand. We sing our final hymn.
when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling to that old rugged cross. I believe that the Christ who was slain on that cross has the power why by the cross I will stay. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still cling I have to wait for Heather to look at me to know if it's if I'm supposed to be done or not. I don't know. Yeah, those guys know what's going on. I'm just kind of standing up here. <laughs> now, here's the thing. You know what I'm going to say, don't you? You know what my charge is to you? Folks, really, don't let these scriptures just fall on deaf ears. Really. Let this Lenten season change you and live like you believe it. You can do this. You really can. It's not, it's not impossible. You can do it. You can live in the power of the Holy Spirit. You, you can live day to day by trusting in Jesus. You can. And boy, the satisfaction you'll find, no matter what the circumstances are, you will. Now may the blessing of God the Father go with you, the peace of Jesus Christ, His Son, and the fellowship and constant blessing of the Holy Spirit. Rest upon you as you walk through this world. May you know the strength and the power of Jesus in your life. Amen. And amen. Thanks so much for coming.